Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for having this hearing. I got here a little bit late, but so I'm not sure I'm correct on this next statement, but I'm not sure I've heard the word sequester. So while we're having this big discussion, and I think it's an important discussion, I look at this as an immediate impact that my constituents are feeling and our economy is feeling because of the sequester. So while I'm glad to have this discussion, I look at it and say we have 13 national parks, three of them crown jewels. We have uh, visitors producing $261 million and uh, thousands of jobs across our state. Um, if the sequester continues, it's something like $153 million impact across the country. And we've already had over a million dollars of impacts that we've had to absorb from Mount Rainier since 2010 that are affecting visitor impacts. When I look at some of these gateway towns that are part of this uh, operation, everything from Port Angeles to Eatonville to the North Cascades, I keep thinking, what's the economic impact of this going to be because we don't get a budget deal? I look at the something like 227,000 jobs in Washington State that are related to uh, the outdoor recreation industry. So for some of my colleagues, this conversation about the future and road maintenance and whatever is, is one economic question, and certainly one I, I have certainly a disagreement point on, I'll come to in a second, but my immediate question is, what is the economic impact of all of this sequestration having on the economy of a state where national parks and outdoor recreation is a key part of our economy? So I don't want to lose sight of that, and I hope you would enlighten us on uh, what sequestration is doing now and what will it do in the future to lessen really uh, an economic impact that will be is being felt and will continue to be felt and uh, what do you think we can do to help get our colleagues to understand this issue the second point is my colleague senator alexander and i have been sponsors of the creation of a new park it's called the b reactor park it's celebrating uh, the achievements of scientific uh, excellence that our country achieved and preserving that is something between DOE and uh, the, uh, the department and creating this. Do I think we should stop uh, creating national parks because somebody thinks the maintenance backlog? No, I want to commemorate what happened at, uh, at Hanford and, and uh, various parts of what we've done across our country. So I certainly am not going to, oh, sorry, my colleague from New Mexico is here. I certainly am not going to have the attitude that we're not going to do any new park until you know the maintenance backlog is is caught up. And so, uh, you know, I guess I'm I'm just one that uh, believes that uh, our generation's challenge is to be good stewards. And uh, this, these these aren't our decisions forever and ever. These are our decisions to be good stewards for the next generation. And so I would just uh, hope you would comment on. One, the continuation of the uh, B reactor park, and two, the economic impact that we are seeing from sequestration on our national parks and what else we can do to help our colleagues illuminate that it really will impact jobs and impact small town economies across our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Cantwell. Um, so let's start with sequestration. Um, the 5% uh, cut that we took in, in March uh, this fiscal year resulted in a $130 million cut to the operations and um, responsibilities of the National Park Service uh, halfway through the fiscal year. Um, and just as the summer season was beginning uh, in most of our national parks. So the, the net result of that on the ground, we had a hiring freeze. We withheld the hiring of 900 permanent positions and uh, uh, 1,000 seasonals. Um, so there was a direct effect Every park in the system had to take a 5% cut. Uh, I was not given the authority to take that off the top or uh, take it out of LWCF or any other account. Every account took a 5% hit. And as you know, every park in the system is lined in the budget. So um, there were direct effects. There were late season openings. Um, there were reduced operation hours, fewer rangers, fewer rangers to fight fire, fewer rangers for search and rescue. I was in the Tetons this week, uh, talked directly to the rangers, and their visitation is up, rescues are up, numbers of uh, seasonals and rangers are down. Um, in maintenance specifically, so I'm, I gave you the number of 444 million that is currently available in our operating budget for um, 
uh, for maintenance. I didn't mention that that was actually reduced to 416 million by sequestration. Um, so all of our operating accounts uh, that would be applied to deferred maintenance actually were hit at the 5% level as well. So it was about a $27 million uh, direct hit uh, from sequestration. Um, you know, my theory on new units um, are that, uh, you know, history doesn't stop just because you have an economic challenge. Um, the National Park Service is, is, has been challenged by uh, and, and charged by this body um, for almost 100 years uh, to take care of not only the extraordinary crown jewels such as the Grand Canyon and the Grand Teton and Yosemite, but historical sites that, that are representative of the full American experience. And that story is incomplete. Um, and uh, the B reactor is the perfect example of that, um, that it tells an incredibly important story uh, about this country and its leadership in the development of the atomic bomb uh, and its role in, uh, in ending World War II. Um, it is the same thing with Harriet Tubman um, or, uh, or the story of Fort Monroe in Virginia. Now what's different about these new sites is the National Park Service goes into them knowing we have extraordinary economic challenges. And so we look for partners. And certainly with the B reactor, we have the Department of Energy, uh, we have the communities and others to work with us. Uh, we go in and attempt to minimize uh, the direct responsibilities of the National Park Service that would add to our maintenance backlog, but recognize we also uh, want to be a part of these stories uh, that tell the American experience. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my time has expired, but um, is that email? Is that email? I, I uh, want to just point out, last time I visited the Grand Teton, I was so surprised walking down the street how little English I heard being spoken. <laughs> that this is, uh, we think of these as our crown jewels, but this is an international tourist area that supposedly uh, generates 436 million benefit to the local economy. So um, this is, these are huge economic resources. So I hope that we will track as a committee these gateway communities, the local economic impact as well of what sequestration is doing because I think we have to be very, very smart about getting, uh, you know, I'm not saying we can't uh, live within our means, but as ju just you pointed out, again, sequestration's impact is across the board and not giving you the flexibility to do something that might have less impact on those local communities. So I thank the chairman. I thank uh, Director Jarvis. Thank, thank you, Senator Cantlaw. And you are making a number of exceptionally Im important uh, uh, points. I think uh, we all recall when another Washington resident, uh, Sally Jewell, was here at the committee and she pointed out that recreation now is a $646 billion annually boost to the American economy. This is outdoor recreation, close to $650 billion a year. This is everything from guides to equipments to clothing. Uh, the list goes on and on. So your points are well taken, and one of the reasons uh, that I asked about the Oregon Caves is that I think you also touch on another very important point that it's not correct to say that maintenance and acquisition are always mutually exclusive, that in a number of instances they go hand in hand and that acquisition may in fact actually lower some of the maintenance costs. I, I, so, as I don't, you, I don't as wanna, usual, you make a number of well, I don't want to delay my colleagues, but I think uh, Director Jarvis will remember this one correctly. A land acquisition on the Carbon River basically allowed us to expand Mount Rainier, but why did we do it? Because it kept getting washed out, so the access and entry point kept getting washed out, and we kept coming to Congress asking for about $230,000 every four or five years. And so by doing that land acquisition, we were able to move the entry point to a higher level and solve a problem. So I, I certainly agree with your point. And I, I would also note, by way of doing a little bit of advertising um, as well, that Senator uh, Cantwell's bill on the B reactor is right now part of the hotline underway. Senator, it is Senator Cantwell's bill and, Chair, and Chairman Doc Hastings and Senator Alexander and Senator Heinrich. So I uh, urge all colleagues on both sides of the aisle to clear this very fine piece of legislation.